Hey everybody, it's Mike. So um, I want to res respond to a comment. I might get to a couple more comments. Um, this is something I enjoy doing because I enjoy the discussion that can come from comments. And uh, I encourage you guys to share your thoughts and your feelings and questions. Gives me a lot of things to think about and to work through. And sometimes I don't know even what my thoughts are about something until somebody asks me a question. And then I find out some, you know, more of, uh, on a deeper level what it is I think and what I feel. One of the things that I, I'm going to start doing here, besides just focusing on relationships with borderline personality disorder, is talking about things that are important to people who would be in that situation. Now, specifically, I made this channel in the beginning because I was coming out of a really painful, traumatic relationship with a borderline. And I needed to talk, I needed to heal. I was in real trouble. And so this is one of the ways that I do that is I share my opinion and I talk about it. So I did that. I had no intention of doing anything with this channel. I just simply wanted to talk and get it out. And um, this is what I do. You know, I, I've got another YouTube channel that is, you know, that I work full time. And so I, I'm used to doing that. It was really helpful for me. I thought there was probably some other people out there that would relate and understand, but my main goal was just to take care of myself. And in a really difficult, isolated situation, do something to talk it through. Because when I talk my feelings through, it gives me some objectivity, it gives me some distance, and then I usually know uh, where to go and what to do. So instead of just walking around the house talking to myself, which I do, I thought I would just do it uh, on this channel. Um, but it's been really interesting. Uh, the channel started blowing up. Um, you know, I, like I said, I, I barely looked at it, and I started getting these notifications and more and more subscribers and. When, and I saw how many people have been watching the videos, how many views and, and subscribers in such a short time. I went, whoa. And I read some of your comments and a lot of you uh, were really complimentary and you were asking me to continue to keep talking about it. So I did. So I started uploading some more videos and I did what I do with my channel. You know, my channel, um, my other channel, this one right here, um, you know, you got you to gotta work it. You got to work it if you want it if you want it to be successful. And this is my business. This is my living. This one. This is how I make a living. This channel right here that I'm on right that, that I'm speaking on right now, the BPD Surviving BPD Relationships channel. That was never meant to be anything other than just something I did to make myself feel better. I forgot all about it, and then I saw that it started taking off. So I started uploading more videos. You guys liked that. I kept on doing it. You liked that. So I kept doing it. But since that's happened, I've seen a lot of different results in terms of the types of comments that I get. So the majority of the comments that I get are very positive and very uh, encouraging. And I have, you know, I do this on my other channel as well, where I tend not to respond to positive comments. Um, I don't really know what that's all about yet, and i got to think about that some more. Um, there's been some, obviously, some very aggressive, uh, very destructive communications, and those have been from people who are in a lot of pain in this channel. So, you know, usually what I'll ask if somebody is, is either being directly con confrontational or trying to, you know, talk around something, you, want, you know, I'll ask, are you borderline? And so far, every time that I've asked that and gotten a response, it's been yes. So far, nobody has responded to me saying, are you borderline, by saying, no, I'm not borderline. So that's understandable. You know, I'm talking about what it's like from the codependence perspective, and I'm talking about things that borderlines do generally that's destructive and hurtful. So it's understandable that a borderline is going to want to be defensive. So I give them some space. And um, there's been one, at least one other person that was extremely destructive and uh, uh, attacked me pretty harshly. And I'm pretty sure that person's also borderline, so I don't take it personally. I just blocked them. I gave them a chance and I said, hey, if you want to be civil, 
you're welcome on the ch on this channel. Otherwise, if not, I'm going to have to block you, which of course made them be even more um, destructive and uh, aggressive and abusive. And so I did. I blocked them. But at this, there's one that just came out of nowhere, and I think this is relevant. The reason why I'm going to share this comment is because if you're on this channel as a uh, codependent or somebody that has been or an empath if you would if you prefer somebody who's been in a relationship or is in a relationship with a borderline um, then you even before you met the borderline you were trained to stuff your feelings down you were trained not to have an opinion you were trained to always be happy and nice and complimentary and because you had a bunch of other stuff going on, many of you became passive aggressive. You know, that's, uh, that's one of the things about codependence that has always bothered me. Now, I am a codependent, but, um, you know, um, you know, people, people pleasers. I was going to use some other words. People pleasers usually really set me off. Because I've, I've got that ability to, to tell when somebody walks in the room and they're, the difference between somebody who's actually really nice and somebody who's a people pleaser. And so um, what I don't like about people pleasers is that they're not being honest with others and themselves. And so they tend to be passive aggressive. They start out wanting to be really helpful, but underneath the surface you find out that they're really quite angry and quite, they feel, um, you know, you know, quite uh, victimized and disenfranchised and all that. And I would just prefer that somebody was just up front, you know, about who and what they were. With that having been said, I want to encourage you and I want to create an environment where uh, you can learn from me and have a space to learn how to express your negative feelings, to first of all, allow yourself to have them and then to express them. And uh, like I said, I would much prefer, you know, if I'm in a relationship with a woman and she's able to look me in the eyes and say, I, I really hate you right now. She's able to do that and own it and not act out on it. And then able to say why either she's going to talk about owning her stuff or she's going to say, you did this and you said that and it made me feel like this. If somebody can look me in the face and say, I'm murderously rageful right now, I will hug them and thank them. I want that person in my life. You know why? Because that person is going to have the ability to tell the difference between whether or not they're angry at me because of something I actually did to them or because it's something that's happened inside of them. And they're voicing it and allowing me to take care of them, either by saying, what was it that I did? And, oh my God, you're right. That was really selfish of me or, you know, narcissistic of me and you didn't deserve that and uh, I absolutely apologize. Or to say, I'm so sorry that you felt like that. That wasn't coming from me. I didn't do that. And then we can both heal whatever it was. And, but passive aggressive people don't let you do that. They don't really come out and say what they mean. They're, they're, they're well, anyway, let me just get to the comment here. So. And I have to say that I don't like bullies. And one of the things that has happened with uh, the, you know, the advent of online interactions is that um, people feel anonymous. And so they feel like they're, they feel bulletproof and they feel as though they can get away with whatever the heck they want. And nobody's ever going to see them or know who they are. Now, you see my face. You know who I am. Um, so... Um, Anyway, anyway, here's the here it is, and I'm just gonna read it to you. And this one says, "I admire you for what you do." This is in response to BDP. What is love bombing? Why borderlines are confusing and hurtful. Um, this person says, "I admire you for what you do. Thank you for helping me with your perspective on borderline relationships!" Exclamation point. You have made a difference in my life, and I consider you a great friend that I will never meet. Now he then. Uh, then hit the space bar a couple of times. And so I don't see the rest. It just says read more. Now, I don't always read the read more because I'm doing something else. I decided to read it because it was such an empowering thing and I was really enjoying the compliment. Here's what, <laughs> here's what came after that. 
With that being said, of course, I don't see this until I look for it. With that being said, how is it possible to release new videos each and every day? Exclamation mark, question mark. You should have summed up your thoughts in one video. Why are you milking it? Or do you need someone to tell you to move on? Well, move on, FFS. I'm assuming that means for fuck's sake. What are, I mean, is that really something you say to somebody you consider to be a friend who's helped you? Well, move on for fuck's sake. What is this channel with new videos every day? Now, if he had just come out and said, how is it possible to release new videos? You should have summed up your thoughts in one video. I would have been a lot more tolerant. I might have had a, a snippy response or maybe not. Um, but that I felt was really destructive. Now, I'm only, I can only assume that Eric is a codependent and that he has been in relationships with borderlines. Now, he might be a borderline because this is something a borderline would also do. What I've found so far with borderlines as they respond to me in a negative way, some of them are very positive and, you know, what that is whatever that is. But a lot of them won't come out and say what it is they really mean. They'll, they'll, they'll want to uh, attack me for something else. And I can see that coming. It's like that's, there's something else underneath that. And if it if it's, seems to be coming out of left field like that, I might ask, are you a borderline? So Eric might be a borderline, um, but I'm assuming that he is a codependent. If that's the case, then this is a great example of what's called psychological projection. Psychological projection is something I recommend everybody go and research. Um, if, if for nothing else, to understand um, what goes on with borderlines. One of the greatest things I read about BPD when I was trying to figure out what was going on with the woman that I was with um, said the thing you need to know about borderlines is they don't see you they see a fuzzy outline of a person that they project all of their unconscious issues onto so if you don't know what what uh, unconscious uh, psychological projection is it's that you project onto others the feelings that you have or traits that you have, either traits that you have or feelings about yourself onto them. Good example is somebody who's a cheater. So somebody who's a cheater and is hiding it, one of the ways you know somebody's a cheater is that they're constantly wanting to look at your phone because they don't trust you. And they're certain, who is this? Who are you texting? I know you're cheating on me. I'm going to catch you. And even if you're not cheating on them, there's nothing you can say to talk them out of that because they are projecting their unconscious guilt onto you. Now, if they were conscious of it, that would be a different thing. So here's what I think is going on with Eric. I think Eric, and again, I could be wrong, but you know, this is what you get. You know, again, I don't like bullies. And I, I strongly recommend that you stand up to bullies even passive aggressive ones, even people pleasers. When a, pe when a people pleaser comes and tries to talk me out of my feelings with a smile on my face, I will tell them, listen, um, I really feel like you're trying to shut me down and I really wanna have my feelings. If you really care about me, I would like for you to be able to just listen to me have my feelings and not try and talk me out of them. And um, you know, I'll give you another example when I, this was, 20 something years ago uh, and my father passed away and I was I was an actor at the time and I was on the set of a film and um, I, I knew that my father was dying and then I got the phone call that my father had died and I was you know inconsolable I was really beside myself and and I you know while on the set waiting for me to go and and you know act um, I would sit by myself and sometimes I would just look at the floor and sometimes if you've ever lost like like a family member, you know, death, you know, my body would start to convulse and cry. It wouldn't be like I'd be thinking about, oh, I'm so sad, I'm going to cry. My body would just convulse and I would cry. 
And I was allowing myself to have that. And I had one friend um, who on the set who would just sit and hold my hand. She wouldn't say anything. She would just sit. I mean, it's, it's making me tear up thinking about it. She would just sit and hold my hand. And other people were coming and trying to, hey, it's okay, come on, you'll be all right. And hey, you know, because it makes them uncomfortable that I was in so much pain. Um, so uh, as she, you know, was doing that and I was seeing the difference and I was so appreciative of her just sitting there and holding my hand and not saying anything, just being there with me in my pain. You know, I mentioned something to her. I said, thank you so much for just being here. It means everything that you're not trying to fix me. And she says, you don't remember, do you? I said, remember what? And she said, you don't remember, you know, 10 years ago when we were in college? Because this was a girl I knew from college who was also acting in that movie. You don't remember uh, that my brother passed away and you just sat there and held my hand and let me have my feelings. She said, I never forgot that. So I'm here giving that to you. And that was really beautiful. And that is being able to just be with somebody in their pain and not have to do anything about it. Now, how does that apply to Eric? Because Eric says that he admires what I did. He thanks me for his perspective on borderline relationships. He says that I have made a difference in his life and he considers me a great friend. Then he basically says, for fuck's sake, why don't you shut the fuck up already? Jesus Christ, how many videos does it take for you to say this? And you're coming up with one every day? Why are you milking it? Now, of course, I'm, I'm adding more to it. Um, but, you know, let me read it again. I admire you for what you do. Thank you for helping me with your perspective on borderline relationships. You have made a difference in my life and I consider you a great friend that I, will, that I will never meet. If he had stopped there, I would have left feeling so good and happy. And now I wanted to read more. Here's this guy who's now my friend. I don't know him, but he's my friend. I've never met and he really likes me and he's good for my ego and uh, read more. With that being said, how is it possible to release new videos each and every day? You should have summed up your thoughts in one video. Why are you milking it? Or do you need someone to tell you to move on? Well, move on for fuck's sake. What is this channel with new videos every day? Wow. Here's what I think is going on with Eric. I don't know if he's borderline or if he's codependent. Either way, you know, because codependents also have borderline tendencies. In case you didn't notice that. Um... I think what's going on with Eric is that when Eric was a little kid, he wasn't allowed to fully express all of his thoughts and his feelings. Maybe he was allowed, maybe he had passive aggressive parents, maybe he had, uh, who knows? Somebody was passive aggressive with him and trained him to be like this. And whenever he went beyond the, whatever was acceptable to whomever, you know, there's an acceptable range of expressing emotions and then past that, move on for fuck's sake. And I think what was going on with Eric is that I think this is what he does with himself. This is where I think the psychological projection may come in. I don't know, Eric, I could totally be wrong, but he's a good example of, of what I'm going to share, at least in what he's expressing here. That... I believe that Eric wants to be somebody who does perhaps what I'm doing in whatever way he wants to do it. And that when he starts to go beyond what he has been programmed is acceptable, either putting some yourself out there or talking or sharing or expressing or whatever it is, at that point he judges himself. So these are the things that he says to himself. And this is really important. This is important to know when the borderline is attacking you, the things that they say are the things that they want to say to themselves. And they don't know, they, they don't realize they feel that about themselves, so they say it to you. They judge you. And I think this is what Eric says to himself when he really puts himself out there and he's on the verge of being successful. Because to answer your question, Eric, uh, why are why am I milking it and 
Um, how is it possible to release new videos each and every day? Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because people have asked me to, number one. And um, I also remember how horrible it was, how horrible it was to be coming out of that and how lonely and how broken and how uh, discouraged and how my whole sense of self was just shattered as well as being rejected by the woman that I loved. All of those things. It was the worst possible moment, you know, condensed in one, you know, all around. It was the worst possible moment all around in my life. And I remember what that felt like. I'm much better now. In fact, I would say I'm in a state of recovery. But if people are, are uh, saying in the comments that they want me to keep sharing and that it's helping them, that inspires me. That inspires me to keep making more videos. Now, I'm really happy for you that you got it first time around. That you heard it, in, as you say, in one video. That you got whatever you needed in one video. I'm happy with that. I don't need for you to stay here for more than one video. Go on and, and go enjoy your life. But how does it serve you or me or anybody else for you to, you know, try and, uh, you know, whatever the hell it is you're trying to do here. It was so destructive and so hurtful. Now, I know Eric is going to say, oh my gosh, you're overdoing it. I had, I, I had a smile on my face when I did it. That's what passive aggressive people do. They put a smile on their face. They lull you into a, a state of uh, feeling safe, feeling vulnerable, inviting you to connect with them more. And then they lower the boom. You know what? I'm just realizing my dad did this to me. I know that I'm now I'm remembering. I can remember being 10 years old. And I can remember my dad who was drunk. Uh, I can remember my dad giving me some kind of a compliment. About something about something I did in school or usually something I did in school. And he did this later, even when I was in college. And he would start these conversations and he would compliment me. And then, of course, being the good son of an alcoholic that I am, the good codependent that I was, the, oh my God, my dad is seeing me and complimenting me would open up this desire and I'd start to reveal more information. And then once he had me in the conversation, then he would compare himself to me. And he would say, you know, when I was your age, I had my own paper route and I was uh, repairing radios and I was doing this and I was doing that. But what you're doing is okay too. And it would be so devastating to me. I just realized Eric did that. Uh, was, I mean, let's hear again his compliment. Let's just hear the two sides of this thing. I admire you for what you do. Thank you for helping me with your perspective on borderline relationships. You've made a difference in my life and I consider you a great friend that I will never meet. That is so over the top. Like so, that's, I mean, that could be, that could be love bombing. Space, <laughs> return space. With that being said, how is it possible to release new videos each and every day? You should have summed up your thoughts in one video. Why are you milking it? Or do you need someone to tell you to move on? Well, move on for fuck's sake. What, why does this channel with new videos every day? So I'm giving you guys permission that when somebody does that to you in your life, you tell them, hey, man, that, that was really hurtful. Why did you talk to me like that? I didn't deserve that. So um, I said some, some snippy things to Eric and I mentioned that I thought he was passive aggressive and I said, you know, it's great that, that um, you got it in one video, but thank goodness I don't have to go on you to make all of my choices and I'm going to listen to what everybody else has to say. But the other thing is, is that I, I want to have a successful channel and that means I upload videos every day. It means I've made the decision that I'm going to make this channel something that I focus on and I and I want it to be successful which means that I'm gonna upload videos every day that means that I'm gonna have um, some videos are gonna be boringer than others some are gonna be better than others I'm gonna have clickbait title because I want as many people to watch the video as possible 
and I want to be successful, and I'm proud of that. And I had to learn to be okay with that. You know, that same father I shared with you about just now, when, I won't get into the story this time, maybe I'll share it with you guys later, but you know, I achieved some real success in college and he made me feel like such an idiot for it. It was because he was insecure. And the, the irony is that my father was extremely successful. He was at the top of his game in his career path. And just me having just the slightest bit of success was incredibly intimidating to him. So Eric, I'm sorry if you see that my channel is starting to take off and that it's starting to be successful and that everybody seemingly except you is grateful for all the videos and wants me to keep doing it. And so I'm sorry that my success is threatening you. But the saddest part is, Eric, why are you not being successful in your own life? Who was it that shamed you when you started to really step out and express yourself? Who was it that came to you and said, hey, I admire you for what you do. You're doing a really great job. But having said that, why don't you just, for fuck's sake, shut the fuck up? Who was it that talked to you like that? And does it help you to share that with others? So, we'll see how this video goes over. I'm still testing to see what people benefit from and what they don't. I'm happy to just keep things on borderline uh, personality disorder relationships, but I'm also happy to move into other types of emotional healing and share, you know, my, my healing with you. As I've said before, I'm not a licensed psychologist or psychiatrist, uh, but I am somebody that has been in 12 step work for almost 40 years. I've been working on myself, uh, spiritually for at least that amount of time. So I do have a lot of stuff under my belt and a lot of experience on how I've healed a lot of things. And I think it can be something that will be helpful for people on here as well. And if you'd like that, I'm happy to continue to share like that. So having said that, again, my message is don't let the Eric's um, take you down. And when somebody's passive aggressive, point it out to them in, a, in as kind and loving way as possible. I'm, I'm a little, you know, one of the things, I don't, de I don't like bullies. And so I tend, to, I tend to fight back. And I'm the last person anybody wants to fight with, trust me. So when somebody like Eric comes along and pretends to be my friend and then, you know, tries to cut my legs out from underneath me, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let him get away with being anonymous. And I'm going to let him know how destructive and how hurtful that kind of communication is. And uh, anyway, that's just me, though. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Hope you're doing well. Talk to you guys real soon.